Welcome back to yet another episode of the Funny Business Podcast. Hope you're having a great Friday. We are as well. We're ready to get into another great episode. And Mike, against all odds, for many, many years of bad luck, the Tim the Tatman curse is finally broke. I, I had such a good zinger. But after our discussion, I... I was told to wait. So, um, yes, you are right. Tim the Tatman is has been rectified, has mm-hmm. been, um, you know, slandered long enough. Uh, for those who don't know, Tim the Tatman, we we've had a conversation about Tim the Tatman once in a while. We have Tim the Fat Man. What? <laughs> um, he's uh, he's a Twitch. Well, wow. Oh my God, he's a YouTube Whoa, streamer. <laughs> now we're gonna get us canceled. <laughs> yeah, we're gonna get canceled. He's a YouTube. He's streamer. actually gonna be more upset by that than you yeah. calling him Tim the Fat Man. <laughs> um, he recently um has been quite the streak. With uh, mm-hmm. guessing just who's going to win and who's not going to win. And it's been horrible, uh, but he made the right call tonight. Uh, well, tonight uh, for the Super Bowl this year. Uh, the Los Angeles Rams defeated the Cincinnati Bengals. Uh, Tim the Tatman was right for once. And, uh, you know, his ERA is not looking too hot, Matt. It's, it, it's not. No, but you know what? Um, good luck has to start somewhere. So maybe this will get him in the swing of things. Uh, not, not, I know football guessing is going to be delayed a few months now that the football season is over. Uh, maybe he'll dabble in some NBA guessing. Uh, but it was nice to, it's nice to see him win one once in a while. You know, Tim, Tim gets ragged on and dragged on a lot by his friends and streamers and the, the gaming community. Uh, and but it's, it's nice to see him win one. And Whips, yeah. It's <laughs> nice to see him win one once in a while. Yeah, you know. You win some, you lose some, and in Tim's case, you lose all of them, but there's always one you'll win. Let's say you start a podcast, or you're running your own side hustle and have a bunch of links that you want your audience to know about. As a podcast, Matt and I have all of our social media, all of our podcast links, and other important things. Make it easier for your followers to find your important links, social media, and latest content by having it all in one page with solo.to. I'll be honest, I have used similar websites like this, but nothing compares to solo.to. All of your links are clean and easy to navigate. Have an upcoming video? It's really easy to make those changes. Plus, solo.to has opportunities to upgrade to include more customization, advanced analytics, and so much more. Solo.to is giving us a special opportunity for you to get 10% off if you create an account and upgrade. Be sure to go to solo.to slash funny business to create your account today. Um, but if you haven't celebrated Super Bowl, let's help you bring that back almost a week, almost, uh, you know, as far as recording this almost a week later. Uh, but Matt, the Super Bowl, Super Bowl 20. 20- 22 held at the mm-hmm. SoFi Stadium in Englewood, California. Uh, Matt, I know your plans were a little unique um, with just a party, like having a get together and enjoying yourself. Um, I was un- unfortunately uh, by myself for this year's Super Bowl, mm-hmm. so not to feel pity or anything like that, but just how it turns out. Um, so, Matt, let's let's talk about the game. Let's bring back the sports this year in 2022. The sports, uh, all so the Matt, sports, all the sports. Uh, so Matt, the the game itself, um, you know, everyone knows I'm not that that good of a football fan. Uh, you know, I I was upset when Ben Roethlisberger retired this year, but mm-hmm. uh, you know, I I definitely don't keep track. I definitely don't know a whole lot of strategy behind football. But granted. I will watch the Super Bowl, no matter who is in it. But I did like this year that it was two different teams playing, and it wasn't a recurring team like a Tom Brady or uh, that's all the person I can think of that you know is back to that. Um, it was just nice to see two different teams going at it at the grandest stage of them all in football. There is a stat like this was the first Super Bowl in like eighteen years or something like that that didn't involve Tom Brady, Peyton Manning, Ben Roethlisberger, or the San Francisco Forty ers that's crazy. Yeah, which which is weird. I mean, we had a few years. The AFC had a stretch of like ten in a row that was either Brady, Manning, or Roethlisberger, 
And then there was the occasional Joe Flacco, Patrick Mahomes, and the 49ers are in him. So you're right. I think it was good to see some different teams. Uh, I think both of these teams were pretty much well-liked, too. Uh, I think America kind of got behind the Bengals a little bit, and I think most people wanted to see them win. But I, I'm happy to see the Rams win, uh, mostly because Matthew Stafford um, playing a majority of his career in Detroit, where he the team just sucks and it's just a bad yeah. franchise. He played really well in Detroit. It's just you can't build a winning roster uh, in Detroit. You just can't do it. So his first year in L.A., I think I actually, before the season started, I think I said it was going to be the Rams and the Bills. Oh. Um, I don't remember who I said was going to win. Nope. But I think, you know, when he got traded to the Rams, it was expected that they get to the Super Bowl. And a lot of times when a team takes a risk like that, trading first-round picks and your current quarterback – doesn't always happen. So I think it was good to see happen. Um, I think there was a lot of good that came out of the Super Bowl, both for the Rams, obviously, and for the Bengals. I mean, the Bengals coming into the season, like they had the fifth worst odds to win the Super Bowl. And they actually made the Super Bowl. The, the, the four teams that had worse odds than them finished one through four last in the league. Hmm. So that was, that's a kind of cool Cinderella story. Uh, I think America fell in love with Joe Burrow. And I, they both teams, I think, have a pretty bright future ahead of them. But I think you're right. It was refreshing to see new teams. Uh, and I think it was a good game. It was pretty competitive. No one really blew out it. Uh, it was competitive the whole game. Like, it right. was a full 60-minute uh, competitive football game, which is really all you can ask for in the Super Bowl. Yeah, I mean, it, there, there's, there's a lot of different demographics that, let's just say, participate in the Super Bowl. Um, you have the people that will watch the game, which admittedly that's that's why it's there. Um, you have people that want to watch the the entertainment or the halftime show, which we'll get into a little bit. Uh, and then you have people that just want to watch the commercials, <laughs> and mm -hmm. then you have people that just want to drink and and be merry and have food. And uh, you know you can't you can't go wrong with that. You really you really can't. Like it brings everybody together in a certain way. Yeah, there's something for everybody. Like, you might not like football, but you're still going to, like, you're not a big football fan, but you lost the Super Bowl. Well, there's people that just kind of like to get together, friends and family, have a good time, watch some football, maybe. Buffalo uh, chicken dip. Some people probably just watch it just to gamble on it that don't even like football. <laughs> uh, which, by the way, we're two years in a row that Tails has failed. Uh, yes. But still, uh, we'll always say Tails never fails. <sighs> um. Yeah. It. It, yeah, that I, once I saw that stat, it was like the team. What what was it a stat? Like the the last the last eight teams who've made it to the Super Bowl who have that won the coin won toss, the coin lost, toss the game. lost the game. I think that's what and it I was. think that happened again this year. It happened I think again the, this year. The Bengals won the coin toss. Yeah, that's that's an insane stat. It's also been like heads like eight of the last ten years. However, tails still never fails. I think. And, and and I guess we can kind of transition into the the whole entertainment or the whole mm -hmm. lights and flair of of the Super Bowl. Um, I really think they should just use a standard coin. I think that is there. There's something to do with that Super Bowl coin, that commemorative coin that they flip that causes it to not have tails never fails. That's a hot take. I like that. Um, yeah, I don't really know what the if they've always used the commemorative coin or uh, it'd be cool if they just whipped out like a penny and be like, all right, here we go. <laughs> I think maybe a presenting a commemorative coin to the coin tosser is a good idea. However, the actual coin toss should be an actual coin um, because you never know. You, you never know who's making the commemorative coin. And if mm -hmm. they have bets or stocks or investments on a certain team, they're mm -hmm. like, okay, well, We'll, we'll make sure it's heads. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Billy so. Jean King did a great toss, by the way. I thought it was yes. phenomenal. I forget what we had last year was was not great. Uh, I don't even know if it was a celebrity or not, but Billy Jean King, good toss. Did did Bush, uh, the yeah. Bush senior, decide to flip it, and he really didn't flip the I think coin that was at all? A, that was, that was, a, was that a World Series game? He threw out a first pitch or something? Yeah, yeah he lifted the I, ball. It's always the 2001 Space Odyssey theme. He'll lift the ball in the air. <laughs> yes yeah it was that was really good um but but man i i think we were we were chit-chatting a little bit before uh the game officially started i was kind of texting you um the rock uh dwayne the rock johnson to give like a little pre-game speech i think that was a little too much so that was cool like uh, the rock did a great job however 
the teams were on the field, like ready to kick off, and the Rocks just kind of standing there doing the, the rock. And again, the rock <laughs> the did ca- great. This ca- uh, this is not a knock on the rock. And the camera was walking around and around. Yeah. <laughs> He's probably got really dizzy after that. <laughs> like it wasn't the rock's fault. It was just a little unnecessary. Like I don't I, I think it would have been better if they would have just had like Bruce Buffer and be like, let's get ready to rumble. Like that would have been cool. Like a quick little minute thing. Mm-hmm. I think the rock took a little too much time, but that's not on him. That's more of the production staff. Yeah. I, I think it would have been better if it was video. Like if it was a video with like really cool like graphics. Like, come on. They used the virtual reality of the the whole like presentation with a curtain like you total i mean come on the rocks in fortnite there's got to be a schematic mm-hmm. that like has the rock in cgi format to be able to present him in virtual reality like come on or is it no augmented reality i apologize yeah i agree that would have been a little better um also real quick not really going back to the game but the the presentation side loved the new score bug loved it yes Love the app. The NBC's neat was kind of like getting repetitive. I absolutely loved it. The little when it, when there was a flag, there wasn't too many flags, which was good. No, the refs didn't really good. get involved too much. Uh, a couple questionable calls at the end, but whatever. Um, I love that the when there's a penalty, it was just like didn't take up the whole screen and like kind of bright your eyes. I loved the scorebook. Totally loved yeah. it. Yeah. You know, and that's that's the cool thing. Like when you have that opportunity, like you're able to kind of break break the let's just say the standard. I, I'm not saying like break it the standard in order for it to be better, but like you kind of can go a little creative in those aspects and be able to try something. And if it works, then whoever made that graphic is probably making millions of dollars because now everyone is using it from there on. <laughs> yeah. If those that don't know, the score bug was the thing on the screen that said score. Yes. Not everybody knows what that's called. Lower third graphics. Actually, that that's more of a it's more of a lower third, Matt. A bug is like they always call it score bug. Yeah, a a bug is like bottom left, bottom right, like a small, like it looks like a bug. Um, Okay, makes sense. Damn broadcasters, they don't even know what they're talking about. (laughs) Um, Do you think, Matt, people are tired of hearing our anchor ad? Yeah, probably. But let's be honest: if it wasn't for anchor, we would not be doing a podcast. You're right, Matt. Once again, we have to thank Anchor for helping us continue to make each episode. Y'all know how it works. Anchor is free. It's easy to record and edit your podcast right from your phone or computer and distributes your podcast to platforms like Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, and more. And you all know that you can make money too, even with the first couple episodes that you start with. So why haven't you started your own podcast yet? Anchor is everything you need to make a podcast in one place. Download the free Anchor app today or go to anchor.fm to get started. That's anchor.fm. So, Mike, when do you think we'll stop talking about Anchor? Oh, man, Matt. You know what? To be completely honest, I think we'll be talking about this for a long time. So, speaking of entertainment, let's talk about the Snooper Bowl halftime show. (laughs) Uh, What? Wow. Uh, Matt, go, go ahead. I mean, I, I have thoughts, but like, go for it. No, you, I want to hear your thoughts first. I thought it was amazing. Like for my dad to text us about the Super Bowl halftime show, like that says something like the thing that I enjoyed the most was I, I was bopping the whole time, but like you had one, two, three, you had, well, five, five, right? Five. One, Dre, Snoop, five the, the, confirmed, the, the, five, beforehand. five confirmed. Uh, five, six, uh, right. six veteran artists coming out to perform a show. Like there was no nervousness. There was no, you know, hiccups. Like it was, it was just six people that were just badass with the show. Um, mm. I, I know I spoke to you about this before, but I, I accidentally spoke 50 cent into existence. In this yeah, you did. Show. You, I don't know how you did, but you did it. <laughs> um, I'm like all of it, when when um God I I only know the name by uh, birthday, uh but I know it. There's more of an official song that oh in the club that's what it is mm-hmm. uh by it's go shorty it's your birthday we are gonna party like it's your birthday like as soon as the beat started I'm like no way <laughs> and then of course that's when my dad texted us he goes Fifty Cent in the house <laughs> um and I think 
out of all of the shows in the previous years, this was probably by far the most practical show ever. Like there wasn't a whole lot of graphics. There wasn't a whole lot of effects. Like it was just straight up. Like we're going to listen to some bangers. Um, and like, I've been seeing memes on TikTok of like when the parents hear the Super Bowl halftime show and it's like the kids like basically hiding from embarrassment that their mm-hmm. parents are horrible dancers. But I think I, I would be right up with them for dancing. I don't know your thoughts on, on the halftime show. I thought it was good. Um, I don't, everyone's saying it was the best one ever. I wasn't like overly amazed by it. Like, I thought it was good. I, I thought they did a good job. I thought they overselled it. They, they made it like it was just going to be the greatest thing ever. And I, I don't know. When it's a Super Bowl halftime show, like I do want to see some graphics. I do want to see some like pizzazz. And there wasn't a lot of pizzazz. Like I kind of like that in the Super Bowl because it's, it's not like your typical concert, like you're performing at the Super Bowl. So I kind of was expecting, and maybe that's on me to expect this, uh, but I was expecting a little, a little more show that went on. Somebody, um, somebody tweeted, uh, I follow a YouTuber, his name's Random Frank P. Shout out to him. Uh, Frank said, does Gen Z appreciate this? Question mark. <laughs> I will say um, my dad walked upstairs when the halftime show started and purposely did not come back down until it was over. Oh, what? He's not a big, big fan oh. of hip hop and rap. Uh, um also i understand why they chose kendrick lamar to gain the younger audience and draw them in. in um you could have picked someone a little better also did not know kendrick Lamar was like five six that was weird uh also april i think april brought up to start i watched the the super bowl with april and my family uh do you think they purposely recruited guys with blonde goatees and hair or do you think they made them dye them I think it was with Kendrick. Yeah, I think it was more of a more of a costume thing. So I would I think I hope so. But hope so because that's a tough look. Um, But yeah, I don't know. I feel like they could have found someone else that would have been a little better than Kendrick. Uh, And then my only other complaint, not complaint, uh, but but why I don't think it was the best ever. It left me wanting more. Like I wanted more of Eminem, and I wanted more of Snoop, and more of even more of Kendrick. Like they each only got like one and a half songs. Uh, Eminem only got one song. He crushed it. Um, but I kind of wanted a little more. That's why I think I like the idea of having more than one person. I think five was maybe a little too many. I think like two or three is kind of a good number. We saw that with, was it Bruno Mars and Coldplay? Yeah, uh, and re no Beyonce. Beyonce. Yeah, yeah, I think that was a good mix because you got to see them a few times. It was more so like, all right, here's Dre and Snoop. Here's Mary J. There's 50 Cent, there's Kendrick, there's Eminem, there's all of them, boom, show over. Well, I think that's, I think it finally, the Super Bowl finally found out what the max was as far as, as a show. Mm -hmm. Like, to have five really star-studded artists on the stage, like, yes, you are right. Like, Kendrick Lamar, like, I, I appreciated him being on, on the stage Mm -hmm. with the rest of them however i kind of wanted a little bit more of kendrick lamar like Mm -hmm. you know i i was think i was like oh my gosh i'm like his song humble is gonna come up or you know some other song that i'm very well aware of same with snoop dogg or eminem like i you know I, i shared this on on facebook uh you know my dad had like a whole bunch of CDs in his truck that he would play when I'm like six years old. And like, you know, Eminem's not really most appropriate for six year olds. No. <laughs> but like that is what allowed me to enjoy the show was because my dad exposed me to that culture at such a young age. Um, you know, I think guaranteed, like if we've all played a sport, like you've you've all heard of lose yourself before, mm-hmm. you know, a big game or something like that. Like there's totally no way you have not. Um, but, you know, there there was a couple other ones that that he had. Uh, you know, I would have totally loved if he just started out with like, guess who's back? Back again. Shady's back. I could Tell I could go friend. to an Eminem concert. I yeah. think that's what really I wanted. <laughs> I just wanted a lot of Eminem. And I, and I think that's, that is the challenge when you have so many great artists that you need to give them equal amounts of time, because let's just say, for instance, the weekend last year, um, Mm -hmm. he was able to do his whole set, like as if it was an actual concert that people attended. Um, but for them, like you had to be like, okay, you got to pick one song that, that you want to sing and that's it. 
Like, and I yeah. think that that limits the artist. But uh, you know, it was nice to see you know uh, a football a football game going on. You know, in a wild concert was going on. So it's it was cool. It was- <laughs> I still liked it. It was good. I just didn't think it was the best ever. I, I think it, it added a little bit more of a family touch to me, which yeah. was why I, I enjoyed it more. Um, like I said, it was very practical. Uh, it was more focused on the music. Uh, you know, I, I think it just brought, again, it brought that personal touch of like me experiencing those songs in my dad's truck mm-hmm. when we were going to work. So yeah, it's, absolutely. It, was, it was good. So um, also weird that it was, in the day too like usually in most cases like it's all filmed mm-hmm. at night it's all live at night mm-hmm. um i can't really remember the last time oh wait no coldplay was during the day too i think probably yeah coldplay was during was. the day and then it always shows up michael jackson always shows up mm-hmm. as it being um you know that that being the one another super bowl performance but i, I don't remember anybody else that that was during the day that comes to mind not off the top of my head, no. No, not off the top of my head. Yeah. Um, Matt, who do you hope next year will be picked for the Super Bowl halftime show? For next um, year? Hmm, that's tough. That's as we a really just, tough one. I don't know. As we um, drop Taylor Swift, we we're like, oh, Taylor Swift. I don't Swift think they would go for Taylor Swift. No. Um, what do you think about, like, I think we may have suggested in the past, but Bieber, maybe? J Beebs back again. J Beebs, maybe. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't know. I think that's a tough one. I don't know if they would ever do like, a uh, Calvin Harris kind of, kind of halftime show. That'd be kind of cool with like effects and things like that. What do you think of Lil Nas X? Um, I think they would, I th- I would love Lil Nas X. I think he'd be good. I don't know if they would pick him just because I think they would, I, I could see the NFL thinking he would be too controversial. Mm. Um, but they shouldn't. But yeah. I think he'd be really cool. Uh, Jack Harlow would be sick. Um, that could I, be that. That could be a good cameo with Jay Beeps. Yeah, because they have I agree. A, that stay like that's. Is it? Yeah. No, it's that's Kid not Leroy. Jack Harlow. That's Kid, Kid Leroy. Leroy. I apologize. Yeah. Uh-huh. Sounds very similar though. Jack Harlow did that one with Lil Nas X. Yeah, uh, I can't remember which one. Lil Nas X is uh, right now. Industry baby. Yeah, there it is. I have Spotify pulled up because I'm like, <laughs> I, Ed Sheeran wouldn't be that bad. I agree. I think he'd be a pretty good he's, one. He's establishing enough bops where it's, it's mm-hmm. you know, it's not more love story. It's more, um, you know, bad mm-hmm. habits like that. That's a nice bop. Yeah, I agree. I, th- yeah. I think he's pretty well liked, too. Mm-hmm. And then the final thing, Matt, that we should probably pull up because that's obviously mm-hmm. why I was watching was... The Super Bowl commercials, uh, as we estimated, the cost was about nine million. Uh, I think I saw another report that it was seven million. So uh, for thirty seconds, you gotta be sure that you are planning to have do something big, make something yeah. memorable, um, make something that we can talk about on this podcast. Uh, so Matt, thoughts on the Super Bowl commercials overall, and then we'll kind of get into the nitty gritty. Yeah, I thought they were very, very bad. Um, very bad didn't, okay didn't, didn't love i mean the super bowl commercials have not been what they have been in the past we've all expected the the funny ones and everything like that um i thought it was a lot different vibe of commercials this year a lot more more serious toned which was okay um way too many crypto commercials mm-hmm. uh which someone brought this up on a good point like they're trying to say like crypto is like money you yes. don't ever see like money commercials no. So what's up with all the crypto? Is crypto actually real, or are they just trying to sell you on it? Well, <laughs> uh, yeah. So crypto, Matt. They obviously were. There was more than actually a dozen uh, first-time mm-hmm. advertisers this year in the Super Bowl. Um, yeah, there were a lot of new ones. Mm-hmm. A common theme that I saw the most: electric vehicles. Yeah, a lot, there a lot was of more car electric ones. vehicles, but mm-hmm. but specifically electric vehicle, right? So that I think that's definitely going to be an, an interesting, uh, you know, as we are leading into twenty twenty two, I think we might start seeing a little bit more. Mm-hmm. Um, but one of the things that I was researching on was that these were more of a standard of Super Bowl commercials compared to last year's commercials because 
we were still dealing in the middle of a pandemic mm -hmm. and trying to find that balance of informative yet entertaining while we were still in the middle of a pandemic. Uh, there was a lot of people that had an issue with. Um, I think, you know, I, I was kind of listening to last week's show because we, we were talking about the Super Bowl. I think Doritos kind of copped out a little bit. Oh, having a combination between Doritos and Cheetos. Oh, I, I fully disagree. Mostly because I thought that was the best commercial of the night. I. It was you know, funny. It's, it was it's, the funniest one of the night. It, it's tough because I'm used to, you know, the actual like real Doritos commercials of I, I remember there was. Uh, oh, God. There was the one about the licking the fingers. Was that correct? Like the Doritos, like licking the fingers. I like think so. They're licking the fingers. And then the guy had the bright idea of wanting to put it somewhere else um, mm -hmm. as far as licking. Uh, yeah, I just I think the only reason why that didn't catch me was because. I saw it as a Twitter ad before I actually watched the Super Bowl commercial. Oh, I didn't see that. <laughs> and I think that's that's what deterred me from it. But the one thing that kind of cracked me up was the McDonald's. Can I get a uh? And then all I think about was that one episode when you start off with, "Can I get a ha? Uh, yeah." And I'm like, "Damn it, Matt! <laughs> uh -huh. You're welcome." <laughs> They get a ha, uh, and like they said, like they knew what they were doing. McDonald's knew what they were doing when oh, they absolutely. did that. That's <laughs> Genius, um, Matt. You, we did, we did bring up a little thing in the right in the middle of it. Uh, you may have seen a QR code that was just bouncing mm. around, like the mm -hmm. uh, classic DVD player uh, yep. that so many of us are always wondering: does it ever hit a corner? Uh, and of course, the crypto Coinbase. Uh, decided to follow along with that and hit a corner, but it mm -hmm. decided to malfunction. Um, that was a genius commercial. Genius. See, I'm, I'm not a huge fan of, of QR codes. Right. I, I, I agree with that. However, how many stupid idiots like us just scanned that <laughs> QR code during the commercial? Right. I still did. Uh, I still right, did. Exactly. <laughs> That's why it was genius because everybody's like, oh, I wonder what this is all about. And everyone has a smartphone now. Like, I guarantee... Almost everyone on every TV scanned that QR code. I did it. Did I actually follow what it did? No, I closed it. But it's genius because every single person was curious. So at least one person in every Super Bowl party scanned the QR code. And that's why I loved it. And how long did it feel that that was the Forever. only thing happening for Super <laughs> Right. Forever. <laughs> like you realize like how much action could be packed in a couple seconds, but like to have something so standard as as that QR code bouncing around, like it felt like an eternity. Because mm -hmm. I think at one point I'm like, okay, when is this gonna end? And I'm like, wait, I said it's gonna end when it hits a corner. <laughs> yeah. I also would have been so mad if they didn't have it hit the corner. Would have yeah. been so mad. <laughs> um we did disagree on this. I did like the Uber Eats and the Uber Don't Eats commercial. So I just thought it was stupid. Also, how many stupid idiots out there are going to be like, oh, now I order this from Uber Eats and I can eat it. Like, this is the same with like the McDonald's hot coffee lawsuit and everything like that. If we could put this in their minds, people are going to do it. You know, I, I think it was hilarious because uh, with Gwyneth Paltrow. Mm -hmm. um, so do you know that whole thing, Matt? Uh, with Gwyneth Paltrow? I, I don't think so. So Gwyneth uh is running her own company um that is called i'm trying to find the proper name for it um it, it's 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 like a scent um candle company uh i'm trying to find out uh what the heck uh is the candle company from but uh but i, I thought it was funny I'm I'm gonna sneeze by the way. That's why I'm trying to like defer to go, you. But um, go I'm for just, it. Wait, nope, it's gone. Okay, it's gone. Oh, okay. Um, so I believe the company name is called Goop. Yep. Uh, so the Goop is kind of kind of a company that is kind of opening up its let's just say taboo ideas. Um, so okay. Matt, if you didn't pay attention. Gwyneth Paltrow was in the commercial for Uber Don't Eats, um, and she tried eating a candle. Mm -hmm. um, and did you read what was said on the candle? 
I did not. So she makes products that smell or taste or feel um, more so of like female genitalia. Like oh. any type of, oh yeah. So so the uh-huh. candle, it says, this smells like my. And ah. yes. Mm-hmm. Yep, say no um, more. So, and then <laughs> she bites into the candle. <laughs> she, <laughs> <laughs> She's like, is that really what it tastes like? <laughs> so I, I thought it was great because people were just randomly biting into stuff, and and it was kind of funny that she made fun of her own brand. Um, can I throw a commercial out there? Heck yeah, man! What kind of commercials did you like? The uh, I believe F- FTX is that the NFT, or is that more crypto? I think that's the, NFT. The Larry David one was hysterical. That's definitely out of tea. Yeah. L- L- yeah, I believe it is. Larry David is just a funny dude. Bitcoin. And, My bad. Oh, it was Bitcoin? Okay. Damn it. Um, yeah, Larry David's just a funny guy, and just him complaining about everything and being wrong was hysterical. Love Larry David. Hold the presses. What about an amazing cameo from Mr. Flavor Flav himself, Guy Fieri? <laughs> was he in there? You didn't see it. No, I'm going to be honest. I don't really remember any of these commercials from yesterday. Uh, So it was the Land of Loud Flavors, and it was the Bud Light Seltzer commercial. I missed it. I didn't see that. I I didn't think Bud Light had a commercial. Yes. I like when it kept going like about flavors and like the hairstyles. I'm like, oh, my God, we're going to see a cameo from Guy Fieri. And then, boom, I sent you the commercial for you to review Yeah, I'm looking at it now. I really thought that Bud Light didn't even have a commercial. It must have been one time I went to the... The the Bud Light seltzer hard sodas are actually pretty good, by the way. You had those? Yeah, they're not bad. That's good. Uh, I, I also... I also oh, oh, real quick. I only have one more I wrote down. Um, I wrote down the AAA song commercial, but I don't remember what song it was. <laughs> uh, I, d- I literally have it written in my notes as AAA insurance song. I can't for the life of you tell you what song it was right now. It's but okay. it was a good one. It's okay, Matthew. Um... I did like the Amazon A-L-E-X-A commercial with uh, Scarlett Johansson and Colin Jost. That yes. Apparently, A-L-E-X-A is supposed to be, is is and can read your mind. Um, and, like, we all know Scarlett Johansson from Black Widow and Colin Jost from Saturday Night Live. So I think it was just a very fitting commercial for the both of them as a married couple but also in their own acting career Mm, i agree Um, that was a really good one so it was it was pretty good the thing that confuses me the most matt is when local commercials come in i'm like wait they Mm -hmm. paid that much money for a super bowl commercial i'm like no 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 i'm like that's no that's not nope that's not how it works (laughs) yeah yeah that is confusing very confusing very very Mm -hmm. confusing because i texted Mm -hmm. matt i said are you seeing this commercial and i'm like oh wait it's it's a local commercial. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I get you. It tricks you up. It really does. Mm-hmm. It really does. So final thoughts on the Super Bowl, Matthew. I thought it was good. Um, again, game was good. Uh, halftime show was good. It had some good commercials, which is really all I can ask for. Uh, yeah. And we had, I, I don't know about you, but we had some good food too, which also helps. I made a keto cheesy chicken um, kind of spaghetti. Oh, pasta thing. Okay. Yeah. Get into it. Yeah. I actually, I didn't buy out, which was like kind of like a first. Well, actually, uh, no, last year, last year, Jenna made dinner. Yeah. So this is two years in a row that I haven't bought out. We got our wings the night before and we just reheated them from Wegmans. Uh, we got a little bit of sushi. Other than that, we just made like appetizers and small stuff. I, I chipped and dipped myself to death. Before the actual food came out, I can eat chips and dip all day long. But if I then switch to like regular food, I'm full in like two seconds, and that's what happened. April bought over this like ranch dip with like spinach and cheddar in it. Uh, We had some New England barbecue dip. We had a smoked onion dip. I was chipped to death, but I love (laughs) it. I did have after my my uh, spaghetti. I did enjoy some very classic chips and salsa. So if there's Uh anything about we didn't. Ameri- we didn't get a. Pasta. We didn't get a to- Tostitos commercial. We didn't. No. Damn. But I feel like Tostitos doesn't have to worry about doing a commercial on the Super Bowl because nine times out of ten, 
<laughs> There's probably a bag of Tostitos on the, the dip bar. <laughs> that is correct. Um, I didn't also love the Budweiser commercial this year. That was the horse, right? The yeah. The horse came yeah, back. Yeah. I didn't, I didn't love it. Um, I, I usually love the Budweiser commercials. It wasn't my favorite. Mm-hmm. Surprised Miller Lite didn't make an appearance. There was a lot of, like we said, there was a lot of new ones. A lot of, lot right. of old returnees didn't come back. There was this weird, oh wait, no, it was, was it Bud Light Seltzer? Yeah, it was Bud Light Seltzer. It was like something with like gaming and whatnot that showed up. And I'm like, wait a minute, what yeah. is that? And then it was, it was Bud Light Seltzer. I don't understand why Netflix got in. Everybody, we all know what Netflix is. And I felt like their commercial just like highlighted movies was a little weird. It was like kind of like a preview, but like, I don't know. I didn't love that one. Another thing I, it was deterred because I saw it on Facebook before the Super Bowl and it was actually like weeks ago. I feel like that's so common now. Like everyone just sees the commercials before they happen. Which, which kind of takes away the fun of it, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but either way, we will be buying these products or not. Or we will be selling them. So let's get into a little one of our own, buy or sell. Uh, Mike, I'm going to take the lead here, if you don't Go mind. It. Go for it. Um, I am going to buy Love. Uh, as of recording of today, today is Valentine's Day. Uh, Mike, we are both lucky to have someone in our lives that we love, but it's also, you know, Valentine's Day isn't just about being in a relationship. It's about love between your friends and your family, and we all have someone to love. So hopefully uh, this past Valentine's Day on Monday, you took the time to tell someone that you love them and to show your appreciation for them. So, so rewind back to the beginning of, of the show when you yep. started off and saying, say, say the part that you were going to, like, that you were talking about Tim the Tatman. Like, go ahead. Mm-hmm. Uh, Tim the Tatman has finally broke his curse. No, before you even announced what? Tim the Tatman, you were like, oh, like, they say they couldn't be done. Yes. It's, so go ahead, say that part before you say Tim the Tatman. I'm so confused. Never mind. I didn't say gonna, anything. So, so you said, <laughs> I didn't say anything. So, so said you said done. something along the lines of, you know, they said against it all couldn't odds. be against all odds. They said it couldn't be done, and I was going to immediately insert Matt actually had a Valentine this year. <laughs> well, I really walked into that one. Yeah, I didn't see that one coming, folks. Matt was so lucky he said, let's not talk about Valentine's until the end of the show. And I'm like, frick. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I, I held, walked I into held that my one. tongue. I held yeah, my that was tongue. A good I was one. Like, damn that it. Was, that was a good one. I can't deny that one. Matt, yes, Matt. I am very lucky. Yes. Um, April's great. We're great. Um, and you're very lucky, too. <laughs> thanks, thanks for telling everybody, Matt. No, I, I am. Uh, Jenna does this really nice thing. Um, every year where uh, she adds to a scrapbook. Um, so oh. uh, she actually, year three of the scrapbook, um, and uh, it actually finished the whole scrapbook. So we'll have to get another scrapbook oh, for, cool. for another year. So I got um, something. So go ahead. No, it's just, it's cool because you, she takes the time to actually look back and being like, oh yeah, we did that this month. Or, oh yeah, we did this this month. Um, it's just, it's cool because you kind of, get to reflect back and you think about some of those moments and memories that mm-hmm. we documented, but then also other memories come up too, like notes, like she'll put notes that I leave her in the scrapbook. And I'm like, I like, I like remember writing it at that point. And then she told me this year, she's like, uh, she's like, I had to put dates on them. So that way I didn't forget when, what part of the month that you wrote them at. So it's cool. Yeah, that is cool. I got something similar from April. She got like this little, like, book of us that we've only been together four months but it was kind of cool as you got and it was like one you can like fill in like memories and things like that nice yeah so that was that was really cool um so i'm buying love absolutely yeah absolutely (laughs) you didn't get it from pro flowers (laughs) no no i went went the different route got them from grocery store baby yep that's how it is (laughs) yep best best way to do it um yeah so hopefully you all get to tell someone you love them this valentine's day um i am going to sell photo shoots not necessarily selling photo shoots i like photo shoots what i'm going to sell is photo shoot preparation um so april and i went out to dinner on saturday night we looked great we want to take some photos i thought to myself i'm like 
why is Matt dressed up so nice? And then I saw a photo. But sorry, side note. I literally, when I see snaps of people at like really fancy restaurants, I'm like, wait, why? I said, what's the occasion? And like my dumb ass doesn't think that Valentine's right. Day, because we celebrate our three years very early in, in February, February mm-hmm. 1st. So Valentine's Day is kind of like just a subset of like our anniversary. But continue. I Correct. apologize. So the photo shoot went great. It was just the fact that uh, where we were, we just didn't have a good background, so we had to make our own background, and it was just a lot of work. But the good news is, as much as that sucked, trying to make sure we had we looked good, once it was ready, the pictures came out great, and that's really all that matters. Uh, but Mike, I do have a newfound respect for you with your photo <laughs> shoots, trying to find out, making sure the background's right and the lighting's right and the shadowing, the shadowing. Wow, I, I don't even know how you guys do it. It's called a four-year degree or just <laughs> yeah. what else? Because it uh no, I, I do I do have to admit I'm 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 reviewing them right now. Um they came out I think they came out great. But for, I'm also biased because I'm in the photos. For, <laughs> for for what you were given, I, I think you did a very good job. Did you use uh like a bed sheet like for the backdrop? Uh no, it was more so kind of like thick construction paper. Oh. That we taped up. Very unique. And then we had like three ring lights. I like I like the the top, the button down. I like purple. It's nice. Yes. Yeah. It's very very uh, nice. One of my friends sent me a gift today of uh, Jerry Seinfeld from Seinfeld, like wearing the exact same shirt with like a popped collar. <laughs> and now I can't get that out of my head every time I see the photos. <laughs> yes. Yeah. We also had a little bit of a, a prop with the balloons. Yes. Uh huh. That was good. Mm-hmm. Um. We went to a hockey game Friday night, um, ah. and that was not just because it was Valentine's Day weekend. It was because of my job. I had to be there because of my job. Um, mm-hmm. So we kind of already had plans for uh, Valentine's Day, but uh, Jenna made a inside out strawberry chocolate cake. Inside out strawberry chocolate cake. All right. I, so it's strawberry cake with chocolate on the inside? chocolate cake with strawberry on the inside because usually in most cases you would flip it yes correct yeah 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 yeah. Yeah. okay i like that so yeah no it's good love it so um yeah that's my better sell well matt i'm gonna sell first i'm gonna sell aging (laughs) yeah same my i am in so much pain today (laughs) oh no what happened uh i really don't know um my whole side my whole left side um and it's like running from like my shoulder to like kind of like my hip uh it's in pain Mm -hmm. i don't know why um and uh yeah my i'm in pain that's it that's all i need to say i'm in so much pain yeah we are old um yoga helps yoga really uh, stretching just stretch yeah stretch for like five minutes in the morning you'll feel great yeah it it has gotten better but like i remember going to bed i'm like oh <laughs> yeah it it's bad. not fun um matt i'm gonna buy two things today go for go it grocery shopping a little pickpocket um i'm buying tv shows okay a little prelude love is blind mm-hmm. is back everybody yes, yes sir um the, but the the better thing is i'm spending it with my better half i'm actually mm-hmm. watching it with jenna this time uh isn't it great? It's, just, it's amazing. It really is. <laughs> so the concept, she got the concept very quickly. Um, and and we'll talk about it when when we finish the episodes. It's a little little bummer. I'll do like a mini set, like a mini like discount because they only released half of the show so far. Mm-hmm. Um, and they're going to do n- new shows every week. Um, you know, for, for that matter. Uh, and then... So yeah, it was great. But uh my buy is the government. Oh. <laughs> very very weird, right, Matt? A little sauce. Uh Matt, I filed my tax return 2 weeks ago. I got my tax return last Friday. No shit. Hey, snaps. <laughs> snaps for money. Let's get it. <laughs> That's insane. <laughs> I like, I looked, so like I was telling Matt, I was like, oh, I had a lot of transactions that I went through. Mm-hmm. And I sat there and I'm like, what the heck? I said, like, should have been a major difference with my debt, like with my, my debit account, like my, my checking. I'm like, wait, 
IRS. And I'm like, holy shit. <laughs> it's like, I got my tax return. Um, so, yeah, I got my tax now, return. That could be you might be the first person in the country to actually do your taxes in February. Nah. That, oh, nah. nah. You're at least in the first 100,000. I really hope. Well, so here's the thing. My taxes came in. I got my return. That means they were correct. That's that's the best part. So you Good can't point. come back. You can't come back on me and say we need your money back. Correct. Because guess what? You gave me my money. I right. don't. Not you also no more money back. You deserve to get that back in, yeah. in, in two weeks. <laughs> Let's be real. If I threw your bone the next year, you might go back to normal. Yeah. Uh, mm-hmm. This year, you're like you know what? Just here, take it. I Facetimed my mom today, and I was like, I got my tax return on Friday. She goes, What? I'm like, Yeah. I said, I, I don't know how I did it, but I did it. Um, and it really wasn't that different compared to the previous years that I've done it. Uh, I've mm-hmm. only, the only thing was a, a adulting, yeah, adulting, aging. Um, yep. I got a, got my regular income, but then I also had a self-employed income that I had to um, claim itself. Mm-hmm. So um, only claim that what the government needs you to claim. That's it. Yeah, that's, uh, that's a damn fact. <laughs> Um, so yeah, I, I, I got my tax return in record fashion. I am putting it somewhat towards a loan. I finished with my quote, uh, my savings goal for my vacation that I'm wanting to take this year. Uh, and, uh, I have just, just a little bit left that, that if I, I want to, want to treat yourself, I I can treat myself, but, uh, I'm sure it'll go some towards some type of investing that I have no clue about. So. Yep. It was great. Damn the government. Adulting. Finally, the government works with me for once. Yeah, it's rare. <laughs> Very rare. Um, all right. Let's, let's do one more before we send you all off on your weekend. Let's dive into a little Take It. So, Mike, today as recording Valentine's Day, uh, a lot of reds, a lot of pinks. A lot of purples out there on social media in the stores. Um, you know, we're always seeing Easter things coming out. A lot of pastel colors, and I think you, those colors universally well liked. Correct. Everybody likes Valentine's Day colors, and well, not everybody likes Valentine's Day colors. If you know you have a, a girlfriend with a red forty allergy and she can't eat anything that's red, uh, so that's Valentine's Day is very. That, let me tell you, that's tough to shop for Valentine's Day, like candies and stuff, because I can't buy anything red, pink, or purple. Wow. Yeah, it's it's quite the thing. Orange, man. Even those are sometimes questionable. Orange and yellow can sometimes have it in it. Yeah, it's very bizarre. There's some blues that have red 40 sprays. Huh. Yeah, it's really weird. Um, but Mike, it got me thinking. What is the worst color? Like ever. Just what? What's the worst color? Now, okay, this is a little more of a preference because, like, we all have like, like, some people like blue, some people like red, some people like green. But like, we never talk about what our least favorite color is. So, what's what's the worst color? So, so there's always been this like conversation, like mm-hmm. men only see a certain amount of colors and women see a certain amount of colors as well. I will say I'm bad at picking out like different types of blues and different types of greens. Is that what you so mean? So like, yeah, like some people say, oh, that's coral. And then other people will say, no, that's pink mm-hmm. um, that's or me. orange or whatever. <laughs> um, so I, I mustard brown <laughs> It's just an ugly color. Yeah. Like, I, what ugly? You know, I for someone who does graphic design, Matt, I just just I'm put in put in it. Hopefully, this doesn't show up. I put it in the chat of our oh, yes, call. Something popped up. Um, that 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 mustard brown, like yeah, you like doing graphic design, like why, why put that on? Why why put that on the graphic? Yeah, why it just it just yucks. Just ugly. Counterpoint: spicy brown mustard is very good. It is like you yeah. can't you can't deny you can't deny the flavoring of a mustard brown, but mm-hmm. the color of a mustard brown. Like I, I kind of googled really quickly mustard brown, and there is a mustard brown sock, and I'm like, ew, <laughs> like that's disgusting. Um, yeah, but yeah, mustard mustard brown is is a very oddball color. Yeah, you're 100 percent right. Uh, I'm just gonna go kind of similar. 
the color brown in general can be nice and sometimes um like hazel or brown eyes i like uh but like brown clothing not a fan like i don't i don't love brown clothing just because it's hard to match like i feel like if you wear brown it's way harder to match if you just wear like white or if you wear black or if you wear gray like if you wear brown you have a very limited selection of what else you can wear with it um and that's why i just don't own a lot of brown um and I just, I think brown is the worst color. I, I like fun colors. You know, I like dressing up in bright colors like purples, pinks, blues, greens, yellows, reds. Um, I don't, Mike, I, you know me. I love my golf outfits. Yeah. I don't own a single brown po- golf polo. <laughs> I don't think I own a single shirt that is brown. Hmm. I'm looking at my closet right now. I have a brown sweater. I don't wear that often. Uh, now, I will say tan is not included in this brown. Because tan, I think, is a different variation of brown. I like tan. Okay. What are your thoughts? You know, I, I actually do have a brown. A, a, a brown. I do have a pair of, like, kind of brown pants. Um, They're not, like, khaki colored. They're a little bit more of a darker brown. Mm-hmm. Um, I just haven't been able to find the right outfit to wear that. Um, So it's it's a little tricky. It's a little tricky it for is. us guys to do that yeah i think i think that's really what i'm basing my opinion on is if it's if you have a like a brown suit like what kind of shirt you're gonna wear with it that uh that gets a little little dicey you want to know um oh what was i gonna mention i think i'm gonna upset you a little bit fluorescent yellow like Um, me like neon yellow yeah i'm not a huge fan of it i i have a pair of golf shorts it's more like a uh, not really fluorescent yellow. I guess you could kind of say it is. Uh, but I think it, it, it depends on the situation you're going to go to or the place you're going. Like, if I wear it for golf, I think it's acceptable. Except, acceptable. Uh, n- not a lot of places else would be acceptable to wear, like, in neon yellow. Did you, did you help? I know we're dating back to our college years. When it was a superhero theme for orientation. Did you yes. help me on my side of, like, like the one I was kind of managing? of move in or were you on the other side of managing like lifting things i was only ever in alumni yeah so do you remember me with that that green shirt or that that yellow shirt that i had yeah. during move in oh that that's the color i'm talking about <laughs> that was tough that was that was now, a tough look for every aspect made sense because there was cars mm-hmm. coming by there's cars backing in like i did not want to get hit so Correct. that's why that's why i had it um so yeah, that's that's kind of why that's why I've I've had that. So um yeah. Sorry, I'm like choking on <coughs> choking on my water. That's okay. Can um, you cough, talk, or breathe? <clears throat> All of the above. Okay, good. <coughs> uh is is clear a color? Clear? Yeah. I don't even know how you can make that a color. Is clear a color? I don't know. I would tend to say say, no. I'd say no. Right. Just because, like, you can see through it. It's not really a color. It's just colorless. Correct. (laughs) That's why I didn't make a take, (laughs) because I figured we both had the same opinion on that. (laughs) Um, I don't know, man. I I love love a good black. Um, Charcoal. Yeah, I love, like, a charcoal heather gray goes with everything. It's great. I yeah, definitely... I love I, gray. Gray can be a boring color, but also it's great because it just goes with everything, like clothing wise. Depends on the type of shade. <laughs> Correct. It does. Yeah. <laughs> like a light gray suit looks phenomenal. Yeah. No, it does. Uh, it looks beautiful. Mm-hmm. So, so beautiful. Yep. So any any reason why you brought up per the take it or. Uh, so I wrote down take it last night. Or this morning on the show notes, uh, and I just had a busy day at work, uh, and I procrastinated, uh, and that was the first ticket that came to my head. <laughs> not, uh, I'm not gonna lie. That's uh, so funny. Which do you want me to just give me advice now? Do you want me to wait? Sure. 
Why not? Okay. Let's change uh, it up. My advice for today, uh, do not procrastinate. One, because I just took forever to get my show notes up. Two, took forever to get take it. Uh, Mike, you see my board that I have behind me today? It's not there. Right, correct. Because I kept telling myself, oh, I'll change it the next day. And then on my drive home from work today, I was like, yep, didn't change my board. You know so, what you uh, <laughs> procrastination is not great, people. Don't do it. You know what you should really do, Matt? What? You should do it as soon as we're done with this recording. So that way for next week, you have it ready for the next recording. Yeah, but that's what tomorrow is for. Oh, man. <laughs> As a joke. No, I probably will do that. Uh, I meant, that I kept telling myself, I'm going to do it, going to do it, going to do it. Stuff pops up, gets pushed back because it's not the most important thing I'm going to play it when I come home from work. Uh, but I probably will change it at some point tonight just so I do have it ready. Nice. Uh, part of me did want to just change the score of the Rams and the Bengals to put the actual score and see ah. if people noticed from last week. Uh, but that was a lot of work. Yeah. Oh, yeah, for four numbers. Oh, my Listen, gosh. Okay, but there's so many letters and numbers in a bag that they're all together. And, like, to separate them, it's it's tough. I got to find a better system for it. So it sounds like Matt needs an organizer. <laughs> I, I do, yes. For these, I absolutely do. You okay? Is something going to fall on your head? Like, been like No, I, was, I have them up on top of my, oh, okay. my desk. So I was <laughs> looking up like, there. Is Matt thinking, like, something's going to fall on Yeah, I know my ceiling fan's him? hanging on by, like, a thread. <laughs> after the renovations <laughs> yeah god do you, do you ever just look back and and see like our old old episodes and like your dark blue walls of your mm -hmm. room like it's crazy yeah it's almost coming up to a year i think that i've had this desk yeah which is crazy to think about it, it took a lot of thought behind you getting that desk god. together <laughs> nine hours yeah <laughs> then didn't you like go to like multiple places and like one was like didn't have what you wanted and you went to the next one and you went to the next one and i got this desk at office depot i did some shopping uh went to office depot saw the desk did some more online shopping i was like i'm not going to find a better desk went online and the desk was like 80 dollars off online which was pretty epic <laughs> mm -hmm. that's great yeah that's awesome yeah it's all good all good in the hood with just yes, sir Lots of anniversaries and lots of things coming up in this new year. Um, and that concludes another episode of the Funny Business Podcast. Uh, buy our merch. It's getting a little chilly out there. If you're up in the, mm -hmm. the uh, Northeast, uh, you might want to buy a sweatshirt. Um, or a t-shirt. It's hitting 60 degrees on Friday. Yeah. <laughs> this freaking weather. Um, it's bad. But it's bad. It's, 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 How it's, much snow did you guys get on Sunday? A dusting. Oh, uh, really? So we were supposed yeah. to get a dusting? I woke up to go to church in the morning, six inches of snow on my car. Oh, boy. Yep. Emotional damage. Um, yeah. yeah. <laughs> that was a really bad impression. Uh, so, yeah, again, love everyone who's purchased our merch so far. Uh, if you mm -hmm. haven't already, you can find all of that along with our social media at solo.to slash funny business. Um, the boys are back in town. Uh, I don't know why I said that. Um, We're not back in town. You know, I thought, Matt, I, I was I was thinking about us playing Fortnite last week for like the first time in like a month. Yes. Um, so, you know, that's that's why I was like, boys are back in town. But I'm like, are we, though? And that's what that was my reservation. So hopefully soon. Hopefully uh, before we all just crumble and just. Yeah, I'm mm -hmm. kidding. <laughs> um, yeah. Make sure. Don't procrastinate. Don't, no, finish don't that do assignment. It. Finish, you know, you understood the assignment if you don't procrastinate. Um, you know, if you have a report that's not based on numerical data by the day um, and you need to get it to somebody, get it to somebody. Like, get it to your superior. Get it to your colleague. Get it to whoever. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, if you need to get something to your friend, like if you owe that person like five bucks mm -hmm. or 20 like Matt does, uh, yep. get, get that 20 bucks. Yeah. Um, I don't know you shit. <laughs> I was like, Matt's agreeing to this. <laughs> I thought he would not be like, an, wait, no. Nope. Not a damn chance in hell. <laughs> you owe me a visit, Matt. That's what you owe I, me. That, that I do. Yes, that I do. Or I owe you a visit, vice versa. Come hang, we'll out, with your out. Parent. Come hang out with your parents. It's, yeah. Just, just drink and be merry. Uh -huh. um, make sure you guys are doing well, doing hot, mm -hmm. and... Find out if love is blind if you really yeah. are uh, looking for love. 
YOLO. Clearly, clearly we aren't, so. <laughs> Not anymore. Not anymore. But until the next time, we'll see you all in the next episode. Stay safe, everyone. Bye.